Glad to know that you're still tuned in to Early Exchange right here on Souk News Television. To the second half of the program this morning, the African Development Bank has approved $500 million in loan to boost electricity access in Nigeria. Now, Nigeria does have a vast population and it also has a very significant energy need. But then this has been marred by inadequate infrastructure, issues with power generation, and of course, losses during distribution. In the first half of the program, you listen to Dr. Dahouse say, um, the discos are not even getting as much uh, as what is produced or getting enough of what is produced. And that's as a result of the fact that the end users are not even paying for what they consume. So it all has a ripple effect and um, if I had to borrow the words of blessing, she'd say the egg and the chicken. That's the case that we have here. So where does it come from? Does the chicken come from the egg or does the egg come from the chicken? Blessing. Well, you see that has been subject to the debate for several years, which come first there. Well, if I had to go by creation, how the word was mm. created and when God created uh, the things that on the earth, Animals and all, I would say the chicken. Which is also first. subject to debate. <laughs> so it's like another debate. Begets, debates beget debate. So, but if I have to go uh, by that word, it means the chicken came first because we need the egg. Yes, I understand that. So let's find out if uh, Chesson, uh, mm -hmm. a public affairs analyst, will be able to put forward to us the egg or the chicken. I don't know which it's going to be for you, Chesson. Is it the egg before the chicken or the chicken before the egg? Uh, good morning, uh, anchors. Uh, let me say we'll say the chicken first, just in line with what the uh, with what Blessing said. Uh, you need you must first have the chicken uh, if it is from the creation. It is when you have the chicken survive, you can produce more egg, then we can reproduce uh, more chicken that will not lay more eggs for you. So the foundation must first be laid of having the chicken survive and they're well fed to produce quality eggs uh, for more chickens to be reproduced. Okay, so blessing. We're going to just act like we got that one fully, but then that's a lot of explanation. Starting off with the loan by, from the African Development Bank, of course, a multinational organization which is dedicated to improving, uh, I would say, the lives of Africans, yes. you know, providing uh, some sort of soft landing as we are somewhat dependent on them. That's the way I want to view it. Uh, it feels like every other time we have issues we're looking for who to, you know, borrow from. But then the good thing is money has been put out. And I, I wonder if this is enough to sort our problems. Let's start off. $500 million. Dollars. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's enough because uh, given what we just talked about, how the uh, energy landscape in Africa needs a lot of investment. So $500 million, I wouldn't think it's enough, but I think it's something to begin with, uh, to improve electricity access. But of course, uh, Cheson Okwadi would uh, speak to it and tell us what he thinks. So $500 million from the African Development Bank uh, for electricity access in Nigeria to be improved. Uh, majorly, it's, this is for energy transition, talking about cleaner energy for Nigeria. What's your take on this loan? Uh, how should it be used? And what impact would it create in Nigeria. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Blessing. Uh, I, I must say that um, I give kudos to AFDB uh, for the support they've been providing to African nation in giving a better love uh, to our citizen. Uh, but I have my reservation about the management of some of these funds that have been disbursed to Africans because of the misappropriation and mismanagement, not having the system to see things through, which has brought us to where we are. Uh, my brother raised an allegation where, that why do we uh, go all out all the times uh, with all the enormity of the blessing we have in Africa to be going borrowing all the time. You wake up, you have borrowed this, they've given us this grant. When will Africa wake up uh, with the enormity of the uh, good things they have to start dishing out to other regions, to other continents, to show that we are not just uh, 
uh, are, are, are blessed with those natural resources, but we utilize them effectively for the growth and the betterment of the citizen. Uh, going back to the uh, loan and the electricity that we're talking about, I'm sure you know we have uh, uh, three wings, three amps of electricity, the generation, the transmission, and the distribution company. And I think this loan has been attached to transiting to renewable energy. Uh, you ask yourself, uh, how many people can really afford the alternative power supply uh, currently in the country is really huge. In as much as we claim and we promote greener energy, I think the way of the uh, national grid is still where a lot of people are actually going through. If you look at... Uh, you having solar, even though we are blessed with good sunshine here, uh, the mix of uh, what we do have as a uh, as a, as uh, a continent of uh, during the raining season, you don't get so much of that rain of that particular thing. We still feel that the national grid is uh, all that we need to go. Uh, the federal government on their part may be working hard. Uh, from what my brother said initially, you you have. Uh, uh, enormity of uh, technical and uh, commercial losses on the part of the disco. And you see, when we transited uh, to the private sector, we thought it's going to be a much relief and improvement on their path. But you've seen a lot of those discos actually being sold maybe one time or given, taken over by their financiers because uh, the losses are quite un, uh, 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 attainable. And uh, they, they just kicked out of the business. You see, we need to go back to a situation where we have the proper system functioning. And the first, if you ask me, is how much have we invested in metering? How much have we invested in the assets that produce some of this uh, energy? A lot of people have been moved to band A, but how many people are enjoying the largesse of that band A in, in, in tune to what the regulators set out there? Uh, you you have a lot of people go out there bringing certain infrastructure that we know will not stand this test of time. And that's why we pick up on the regulators to see how we monitor. It's not enough to dish out money. We've seen a lot of money. When you start right from the time of uh, Obasanjo, a lot of money has been invested in power sector, but we've not gotten the dividend of it. Since 1999 till now, I think just this morning we are hearing about the improvement in generation. That's why that has actually been put into the hands of the private sector to about 5,000 megawatts. And you ask yourself, with the 200 million, over 200 million Nigerians struggling with 5,000 megawatts, when we have countries like South Africa having as much as, uh, uh, as 40,000, uh, 40, 50,000 megawatts, uh, how much value would that particular thing give to us? You see, areas where I feel is of concern to me is that funds that have been dis disbursed are not properly monitored to be seen, to be judiciously used for the purpose at which we are getting that thing from. It's not only in the power sector, but a general thing that speaks to the system, systemic failure of uh, uh, of us as a nation, which we need to address. You just hear that these $500 even though Blessing was saying that uh, it's really not that much, but it can take one or two steps ahead of you. It's a journey of uh, uh, 10 my steps with a step. If you add that and it's judiciously uh, used to the aspect at which we grow that sector, uh, because power is very strategic to the growth of the economy, but you discover that it will come, a uh, certain set of people will tap into it, that are not meant for it, they will misappropriate the fund and nothing will happen. That is my concern. And that's why we've been asking for a proper system to be put in place to check the act activity of investment into this sector if we must grow all at all. Well, you've been going on and on, Chesson, and uh, it feels like um, you have fears about the fact that uh, we might get it wrong despite some light being at the end of the tunnel, as is the case here with the $500 million loan from the AFDB. But let's get back to the basics. Let's backtrack just a little bit. What would you say is the biggest challenge? Um, I mean, if there are challenges, if it's more than one, you could probably reel out uh, with the electricity situation in Nigeria, access to electricity. What's our biggest challenge as consumers in accessing electricity in Nigeria? 
Okay, thank you very much. As consumer, I think the first area uh, the government need to address is to have, uh, bring up transparency in whatever we are doing from the distribution app. Uh, the fuel uh, electricity being generated and transmitted, uh, can it be accounted for? And when you talk about accountability and transparency, uh, you must speak to that with the distribution company. Uh, currently, the uh, connection policy that we have, I must say, uh, it's really worrisome. You see a lot of cobwebs in our connection and pretty difficult for you to trace issues when they happen. Uh, people tap supply from one another without the knowledge of even the person they are tapping from. I think we must first address the area of connection in such a way that you have a clean environment, easily traceable uh, 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 connection for fault detection and also for you to be able to guarantee that the person that is utilizing the supply is the one that is playing for it. The second aspect when we come from the consumers, uh, the customers uh, to the, 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 the distribution company is the area of having that asset that can accurately, you know, capture what you're utilizing and you can take the decision on your own uh, how you make use of your meter. And that's why we speak to the aspect of saying that people should be metered, whether it's to be paid for. People like us have advocated that even though you claim it's your asset, it's good that you allow people pay for the asset because when you want to give something free, it becomes a bottleneck for everybody to have access to. So I need a meter, let me pay for it and we have access to it. Uh, I, I, I know that for like uh, six, seven months, it was pretty difficult because of the uh, uh, instability in the foreign exchange, because these are not produced locally. Uh, we bring some of those parts into the country and the producers and the manufacturers are actually complaining that the regulators fix the price, but it's really not worth what they are actually buying from the international market to couple in the country. And just like two months ago, uh, we saw regulators coming with the new meter pricing and uh, take it up from there that people can start paying for meter. I think everyone just need that access to add meter and they'll be able to account for what they are using for. The other aspect I want to speak to is that uh, even when these supply are made available, Nigeria likes cutting corner. And that's why the disco find it difficult to actually remit back what they are getting from the transmission through a, a embed, which have actually been dissolved, and it becomes a bottleneck. Uh, you have infiltration on the part of the personnel working on the part of the discos to not being sincere because of the greedy nature. They see some things and they keep it to themselves because it's about them and not the organization they are working for. So we need reorientation of the personnel to have a buy-in into the organization they are working for that when they see something, they pick up that thing and they do the need for in such a way to generate revenue for their organization and not for their own personal post. These are areas I feel we need to work with in the area of distribution. When you go to transmission, you discover that that relies solely more on what is being generated. Uh, some of us have picked up on the current minister to say, uh, you are guaranteeing some people 20, 24 hours and you put them on band A. Uh, have we increased the generation in such a way that you can even transmit that to the end user? And also, can we guarantee that the current infrastructure at the distribution network can withstand even 24 hours? Uh, my brother, I, I'm sure if they give you 24 hours for seven days, you'll be afraid. Uh, what, what that speaks to is that if the transformers, which as we speak, a lot are over 15, 20 years, and some of them need replacement, if they must stand the test of uh, this availability we are talking on. And that's what majority of uh, the thing that we expected from the uh, disco when they were actually took over in 2013, which we have not seen so much of it uh, currently. So I feel that the, the the current investors in the distribution company looks at look need to look at how we we'll replace some of these assets to plug in into the availability that is actually being speak uh, being spoken of uh, by the, uh, uh, the, the 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 minister. A lot of people, even when they have supply for two weeks, they will be out of the supply uh, for like a week because the asset on its own cannot withstand 
what you're actually putting on it because it's, it's, it's long overstretched. Something you've been using for like 20 something years and uh, there is no proper maintenance of it. And now you just want to overload it with what you have. It becomes a problem. So if we are able to generate more and transmit more, the end user on their own, because we've seen instances where this go refuse even what is being transmitted to them because of accountability. And that's why I said we must have proper metrain, the orientation of the uh, mind of the personnel that the discos are actually so that you can have accurate collection of what you are billing the people. And with that, we can see growth on the part of that sector. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, sir, in 2022, the federal government uh, actually launched the energy transition plan. And in June of last year, 2023, uh, the new Electricity Act was uh, enacted, which decentralized the electricity supply uh, industry, uh, creating room for more investments by sub-national governments and even the private sector. You've talked about how people connect. It's like a cobweb of connections. People connect or tap into other connections uh, without even making those who own the connections aware. When this new act was created or was um, enacted, creating the room for other investment and sub-national uh, participation in the electricity supply industry, we begin to, began to see that even state governments were beginning to get into that field, supplying electricity to some parts of their state. Uh, a good example of that would be a new state and some other states in Nigeria that have been able to do that. Talking about the infrastructure, the distribution infrastructure, whose responsibility is it to upgrade this infrastructure if we're to improve on this side? If more players are coming into that field, whose responsibility is it to clean the web so there are clear connections you know these connections for instance belong to this uh, distribution company or this supplier and so it's easy to identify for instance where there is a problem secondly on the issue of metering this has been an ongoing conversation the federal government has the presidential metering initiative but there is a school of thought that thinks it is more profitable to go on estimated billing than metering because when you're estimated, even times when there are outages, you still get to pay your electricity bill. Unlike when you're metered, so if you do not get to use power, your units do not run. What do you think about this? How has it affected the access to electricity for Nigerians? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Blessing. Maybe I will start from the reverse of saying uh, the distribution company stands to profit uh, from that estimated billing. Uh, it's 50-50. You know, at times people are estimated below what they are consuming. Mm -hmm. And that's why we've come with that uh, approach mm -hmm. to say that uh, we want mm -hmm. a situation where mm -hmm. metering will be the order of the day mm -hmm. for people to actually carry out, mm -hmm. to be transparent enough. What meter does mm -hmm. is that you can see for yourself mm -hmm. what you are utilizing, mm -hmm and what you are paying for, as mm -hmm. against you just going around and uh, envisaging whether those things. So it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's give and take. Some of those estimations you see favor some people, while on the other side mm -hmm. is actually altering uh, the, the, the progress of some of those uh, distribution companies on their mm -hmm. own. And speaking to the Electricity mm -hmm. Act that was enacted 2022, yeah, is still a major concern because there are common ground between the, uh, the uh, uh, National uh, Electricity Regulatory Commission NEC uh, and uh, what those states that has actually been divulged with the power. You know, the connection policy that we have currently have those discos uh, that will speak to the 11 discos, have their in infrastructure interrelated. Take, for example, uh, Ibadan discos cover about four or five states. Uh, when you look at uh, uh, just disco as about four or five states, how do you start decentralizing some of this infrastructure uh, from the major up? Because they have invested a lot. Uh, how much do you regulate? These are laws that the state are actually trying to put in place, working with NEC to see how much they can actually tap into this. Uh, we've seen uh, Ikiti. You know, coming up with some of these laws and seeing how they can have 
handshake with Benny Disco. Edo is doing the same thing. Lagos is having an in-roll into that with uh, Ikeja and Eco because this infrastructure is there. You cannot go ahead and start building your own infrastructure because it's capital intensive. How can you tap into this and have it? So this discussion is still ongoing and that's why you've not seen most of the subnationals, you know, plugging into it to say, we are providing this, we are providing that because they need to have a good handshake with the current distribution company on the sharing formula. And we hope, uh, hopefully, with some of the meetings that uh, we've been having uh, before the end of this year, we should have an inroad into how uh, the investment will look like if you are tapping and what you need to pay back to the disco. But I must say that uh, uh, the, the, the major problem it's not only about providing the uh, or making the supply available. It's you being able to account for it. And we've seen instances uh, that people on their own should change the disco. And that's why we advocate for instance of proper monitoring of the activities that is actually going on. Uh, it's not when you provide and you can't account for what you've seen. Uh, you see, most of the time, even areas where they are metered, you see people bypassing meter. And when they get hold of you, uh, it becomes an explanation that uh, everybody sees, all in the name of trying to avoid penalty. We must adhere to this. When you see something, you say something because if you allow your neighbor to shortchange you, and uh, uh, the, the whole thing will bounce back on you. And the distribution company has an inroad. That's why I said reorientation of the mind of the personnel. When you report something, how is it being handled? Are you taking advantage of that report for your own personal gain or is it in favor of your organization that you are leading? So th these are a few things I feel we need to do. Uh, even though we introduced technology to some of these things, we've not advanced to that level where we can track it. We still have a lot of manual computation uh, in terms of some of the things we do. Uh, but before we get to that level where we can go fully automated in some of the things, some discos are doing automatic uh, reading on some of their transmitters uh, instead of uh, the transformer to cumulate it with what is being generated uh, in a particular area. But situations where you have people not properly metered, that's where the estimation comes in. Estimation is not just a blank thing. When your transformer is metered, they expect the amount of money to be generated from that area. And when you take out the people who have the meter, the rest is being shared for those that are not metered. And it looks as if, uh, at what point did I use this? And that's why we say the enlightenment must be out there Talk to your neighbors who you often see. They are not metered, but they own their light on indiscriminately. That on its own stretch, you know, the asset of the disco and it must be properly addressed. With this, if we are able to jointly work together as citizens, I think we can both improve, uh, we can all improve uh, the, 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 the electricity sector, which plays a major role in economic growth and development. Well, Shasson, I'd like to thank you for answering that expertly well. Uh, but let's get back to the loan. We have $500 million on the table. What specific areas, projects, initiatives do you uh, see this money being channeled to? Because I know you had talked about judiciously using the funds which has been provided by the AFDB. Yeah, I, I think uh, if you, if with, with the fund that is actually uh, speaking to, that we're speaking to $500 million, I see more concentration should be in the area of metering. We need accountability of the energy being consumed and uh, invest in infrastructure to properly track, uh, you know, the utilization vis-a-vis uh, -vis payment that people are making. Uh, if you ask me, uh, we are lacking in that area and that's why it's pretty difficult for some of these disco to survive uh, because there is no uh, transparency and accountability. People get estimated billing and they don't pay. Uh, when it's estimated billing, somebody uh, is using too much of supply and they give me and say, because it's estimated, no, I'm not going to pay. Or I'm going to pay 50%. I'm going to pay 30%. Otherwise, if you meet up, because I've seen that instances happen, uh, somebody will be on estimated of 100000 in a month. They now installed meter for him. 
And within a month, he consumed about 400,000. He came out to say that the meter they've installed for him uh, was actually doctored uh, by the disco. That, that's not true. You can see the losses on the part of the disco for not doing what they are supposed to do. And that's why we feel that metering is the core of having that growth so that when you collect more, you'll be able to invest in more infrastructure to provide that energy for the consumer. So I would say critically, we should look the area of empowering the distribution company by providing meter and improving on the dilapidated and obsolete infrastructure in transmitting that light to the end users. What this uh, energy transition plan of the federal government for which this $500 million is coming to support, the plan is to transition Nigeria to a modern energy economy by the year 2015. In fact, the projection is to generate about 250 gigawatts of electricity by 2050. Currently, from the national grid, do having a capacity of about 22 megawatts, the country generates about 4.5 megawatts uh, of electricity. If the aim is to have an energy mix where renewable energy is more of what we currently have, to what type of renewable energy should this fund be committed? Yeah, well, maybe we'll speak to uh, solar. Uh, if you ask me, knowing at the intensity of uh, the sun that we have, uh, that can be a mix of what we have at the national grid. Uh, but there is something we should be able to sink uh, whichever uh, option of the renewable energy to the national grid in such a way that that will contribute to it. A lot of people, as we speak, are off the national grid. And the energy that they are generating uh, is cannot not only be consumed by them. And that's why we have asked, can we have a platform where somebody has a solar, uh, all it needs to consume, maybe the old house can even consume it, where we can have a sharing formula to say, this energy, this investment that we have actually plugged in, this is what you are paying on monthly for maintenance and for us to be able to, uh, you know, have a change of it when this gets dilapidated. We should have that integration of this renewable energy into our national grid. It's very much fundamental. I think the area where everybody is looking at is the area of solar. Uh, when you talked about the other one is to store energy, which you are getting from it. So with solar, you can have that. Uh, we can make use of a uh, 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 wind uh, energy, but I don't think that is of more prominence when it comes uh, to this part of the uh, continent. So solar is the way to go, but how can we uh, uh, have affordability of some of these things to a common man is the area we need to look to and also be able to integrate it into the national grid so that when people generate this from uh, the alternative or the renewable energies that we have, like solar, it can increase the baseline and that you can share. And say so this is just a practical thing that we have with the German electricity. A lot of people, they have incentive in installing the uh, renewable energy, the alternative power supply like solar, and they have so much rebate. A lot of people invested in it, they contribute to it, that it got to a level that people are, are considered that to be cheaper and they abandon the national grid for that alternative power supply that is being shared because it's still being monitored by them. I, I think that is the route that we, we, we need to go. If we're able to invest more into solar, plug it into the national grid and be able to distribute effectively, it will assist in growing our economy. Um, you're suggesting solar, and if, I don't know if you think that's a strong, sustainable um, source of energy uh, for Nigeria or uh, the electricity sector. Because for me, I feel you know we need to be able to avoid future crises. So if we're investing in solar, can solar provide the amount of uh, electricity we require as a nation? Population growing in leaps and bounds and is projected to even um, double at some point in the next couple of years. So is solar energy going to cut it? And if not, is, are there any other uh, alternatives out there? Yeah, you, you see, it's a mix of solar and the national grid. I'm not saying specifically solar. You see, the other uh, energy that the uh, uh, means of doing that, which when you talk about wind, when you talk of uh, coal, 
uh, are, are things that are actually still being destroyed. I, I, I was thinking we could explore that avenue of coal uh, way of generating energy. And uh, with the coal that we have deposits that we have in the eastern region, uh, people can tap into that. We have several uh, areas. We can make use of uh, uh, the wind energy too. But these are deep investment, capital intensive, that it's not something you want to gamble about. We've seen and test that area of solar. We've seen and they have a little enroll into that of the coal, uh, but the, the capital nature of it is what is making that sub so my submission to solar when it comes to it uh, to complement the national grid. When you generate so much from this alternative power supply, have that projection of injecting it into the national grid by the infrastructure that you will provide and that on its own that can augment what we currently uh, have. So part of the objective of the support is to improve electricity access. Whether it's being channeled towards solar or other kinds of renewable energy, how would that, at the end of the day, improve access uh, by making it cheaper and uh, affordable by Nigerians? And this $500 million is a loan, meaning it will be repaid. Mm -hmm. How should it be used to ensure the repayment? Do we need private sector in involvement? Uh, okay. You, you see, uh, I, I would say that uh, the PPP initiative should be uh, an area that we need to consider. Any business you leave in the hands of the government, we have seen it not work in the proper way that it should be. Let's engage those who have understanding of the business and who their major focus is to make sure that the business grows in nip and band, knowing fully well that they have uh, stakeholders to satisfy and they themselves have to grow the business uh, the way it is. So, PPP initiative is the way to go. Let's get involved the private sector uh, to tap into some of these resources and uh, create the enabling environment, uh, avoiding uh, 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 what I call change in policy. Policies from a certain, you come in today with a policy that will enhance the business and on the other hand, you are bringing out a policy from another agency to winch on some of those businesses that you're actually asking to grow. Uh, don't call, don't give on one hand and take from the other side. You must be able to trim uh, your, your activity by every agency to collaborate in such a way that you will grow the business. Uh, because most of the things we've seen is that when you give the initiative for this private firm to come, on the other side, multiplicity of taxes will take them out of the business uh, with uh, uh, over time. And that's why we will give kudos maybe to the presidential tax force on fiscal policy to see how they can streamline, you know, the taxes that are being paid by the people. But the route to go is the uh, public-private initiative where the government availed the funds for those that have understanding of the business to actually work in line with the set goals of increasing this availability uh, that we're talking of. So when you have more players in the sector you know, competing favorably. What that does is that the normal economics uh, speak to it that when you have supply outweighing demand, when you have so much of this electricity in place and uh, people are actually demanding for it and you're able to meet that demand, you discover that it will crash the price on its own rather than leaving it in the hands of very few, which you look at the area of monopoly uh, to decline with. That's the area I feel that we just need to look at this critical. Okay, so finally from me, um, you had uh, spoken very strongly about energy theft and the need to cure it. But some unpopular opinion has it that the powers that be, um, who are probably uh, biggest importers of power generating sets, uh, which uh, individuals and organizations depend on to provide electricity, somewhat also um, fighting against sustainable energy or constant power supply in the country. I don't know what you make out of that. And if, you know, government were to uh, really settle down, you know, put its eyes together and say, oh, we want to face this sector squarely, uh, there might just be uh, restrictions, some fight backs from those persons who benefit from that particular market. Uh, let me speak to this. You see, the failure of the power sector is what actually 
uh, uh, encouraged the aspect of bringing this is an alternative power supply, which everybody needs. If the government is intentional and they are serious about this, uh, those other people might be the one that will even invest in increasing the power supply. I hear that a lot that the people, the cabals uh, that are providing generators will not make power to work. No, if the government is intentional and the availability is there, I can tell you as an individual, I can't remember the last time I owned my generator because there is power supply. It's over eight months and that's for real. So I'm even considering just giving it out as an individual because I don't see the urge and the need for that that I said. But before now, before we have this other alternative power supply that people have invested in, in terms of solar, in terms of inverter and the like, you see people replacing their generator like every two, three years. But this is a generator I bought for over like eight years. And uh, after uh, like two, three years, I've invested in other alternative power supply to complement the national grid. Uh, you know, I've actually had no cost for that generator. So if the government is intentional and sincere about improving the power supply to people, the generating set or those businesses, those are in, in the business of this generating set, we fizzle out with time. They actually cash into the opportunity of lack of availability of supply to provide alternative to the people. But if the real power supply is there, I can tell you that individual needs not to go the route of, uh, you know, chasing that part. We they go ahead and be disconnecting the uh, supply when it's not supposed to uh, uh, be disconnected. When there is availability and the company concerned are actually monitoring the supply, the answer is no. So if the government is willing and they are intentional about improving the supply, you will see those that are in that business fizzling out uh, of the business and looking for area to possibly invest in the because an average businessman looks for an avenue to quickly make quick quick wins of his uh, investment. And if you see that. Buy more generator will not favor you because there is availability. You will just ease off uh, the process. Cheson Kouardi, Public Affairs Analyst. We appreciate your time with us on the show today. A great time to be with you and thanks for having me. All right, it's someone's birthday today. Wisdom Musama is a member of Technical Crew at Sook News TV. Happy birthday to you. Wish you many happy returns. Where's the I rice? Hope, yes, where is the rice and the cake? Please make sure they're available. We're ready for the party after the show. You can watch this edition of Earth Exchange all over again on our YouTube channel at Sook News TV, and you can leave a comment when you visit our pages on different uh, social media platforms on Facebook, on Instagram, on X, at Sook News TV. We want to know what you think of what we discussed about today. The conversation continues now with you. And the show returns tomorrow, 8 a.m. West African time. I am blessing AEG. Have yourself a wonderful day. Well, it's been a great time with you. And of course, uh, E for energy. <laughs> We're looking forward to um, government utilizing the loan that has been secured for the purpose of improving electricity, energy, and making it more sustainable for Nigerians. My name is Temple Barra. A suk day to you and bye for now. Exchange, shaping policy, advancing development.